When designing an fMRI study, one important step is doing a pilot study so that you can calculate the power for a future sample size. This is important in grant writing when people want to know how many subjects you would need in order to reject the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is false at least, say, 70 or 80 percent of the time. Now, to do this, we have a tool called fMRI Power, which we can use to calculate power estimates for different sample sizes or a range of different sample sizes. First, download and install fMRI Power, which is provided in the link below. After you've done that and installed it and added it to your path, just type which fMRI Power, and you should see a full path to where you've installed it. From there, we can simply type in fMRI Power and it will pop up. In this case, I've used SPM to generate my analysis, so I'm going to select that. For design setup, select the SPM file, and in this case, I have five pilot subjects. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And also, this is a very simple contrast where subjects either got an error feedback or a correct feedback. This is a pretty well-known and well-studied phenomenon, so I already know that the effect is pretty large and I know roughly where it should be located based on theory. For the power calculation options, click on Select Design Matrix, and in this case I'm going to select the simplest example, which would be the one-sample t-test. For more complex designs, such as two-sample t-tests or ANOVAs, you would select No and enter in your design matrix. But in this case, I can simply say yes. And for now, let's select an individual size for our power analysis. Let's say I predict I'm going to collect 20 subjects, either based on the amount of resources I have, or I just feel like running 20 subjects for my final analysis. Select OK. And for the ROI mask, it'll default to this atlas right here, which generates ROIs in virtually every part of the brain. Now we wouldn't necessarily do this for real power analysis, but for demonstration purposes I'll leave that as a default. And for type 1 error rate I'm going to select 0 .001. Once that's done, click Calculate. And the resulting graphic will show you power estimates in each of these different ROIs. Because remember we selected an atlas which generates ROIs for pretty much every area of the brain outside of the white matter. So here you see the power <clears throat> expressed in terms of percent. And as we click around in different ROIs, you can see that it changes and it goes up or it goes down based on which region of the brain that you're in. You also see the mean in standard deviations. This is equivalent to Cohen's D or effect size if you're running a one sample t-test. You also see the mean averaged across all of the voxels in that ROI, or the average voxel in that ROI, and the standard deviation of the activation in that ROI. So that's if we use an entire atlas. But let's go back and select an ROI that was generated. Now it's important to know that you should use an unbiased ROI either based on anatomical landmarks or on an independent contrast or on another study's functional contrast. In this case I've defined the anterior singlet anatomically. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, leave everything the same, and also if I go back to select design matrix, I'm going to select a range of sample sizes. Let's say 15 to 40 because I have a grant in the pipeline and if it gets funded I might be able to run a bunch of subjects. If it doesn't, maybe I can only run a few subjects. And I just want to know what power estimates are associated with each sample size. So go ahead and click that. Click on Calculate. And again, since this is a range, if I go within this ROI you're going to see a power curve. So note that for only 15 subjects, my power is relatively low. It's close to 30. But as I go up, once I reach about 27, 28 subjects, my power is about 80%, which is good. 
for more nuanced contrasts, ones that aren't expected to be as robust, don't be surprised if the number of subjects for a relatively high power is closer to 50 or even 60. So that's how you run a very basic power analysis, and using that tool makes it very easy to see what power is associated with a range of subjects. Using this can be very useful for writing grants, but it's also important to note the following things. One, you should use an unbiased ROI, and two, the sample that you use for your power analysis should not be factored into the final sample size that you use for your final power estimate.